The vulnerability of the brain to metabolic illness is obvious when you consider that while it constitutes only 2% of the body's volume, it consumes over 20% of its energy. Indeed, dementia is often now referred to as type 3 diabetes, and we've got multiple lines of evidence linking poor metabolic health to dementia. For example, subjects who have an increased waist circumference, which is a marker of visceral fat deposition and poor metabolic health, are three times more likely to develop dementia than their lean counterparts. Obesity too, quite literally, shrinks your brain, even for those in their 40s. So then, what to do? How do we prevent dementia? We'll start by avoiding processed foods which are often loaded with seed oils and fructose containing sugars. You see, these substances are uniquely harmful to our metabolic health, and when consumed habitually, they can be devastating to our brain. Let's begin them with sucrose, commonly known as table sugar. The thing that makes it so bad is that it contains exactly 50% fructose pretty similar to what is in high fructose corn syrup. And fructose, quite specifically, contributes to metabolic sickness, which includes fatty liver disease and insulin resistance. The end result of which is elevated levels of sugar in the blood, known as diabetes. This study clearly showed the metabolic harm of fructose containing sugars. 41 children who habitually consumed high levels of fructose containing sugar had the fructose replaced with glucose. Essentially, the fructose intake went from 12% of their energy intake to 4%, while their total carbs and energy intake was kept constant. In just nine days, their average liver fat reduced by more than 30%. And not surprisingly, this was also accompanied by big reductions in insulin levels, all after just nine days of reducing fructose containing sugar. The point is, fructose containing sugars can be devastating for our metabolic health. Let's now take a look at seed oils. By virtue of their chemical structure, polyunsaturated oils are prone to something called oxidative damage. These double bonds present in all unsaturated fats are chemically reactive and prone to something called oxidation. And this is why when we heat unsaturated fats, they produce far more toxic compounds than their saturated counterparts. And you'll note that olive oil, which is largely monounsaturated, meaning it contains a single oxidation prone double bond rather than the multiples found in polyunsaturated seed oils, is something of a halfway house. Not as oxidation prone as seed oils, but not as stable as saturated fat. It should be noted there's no compelling evidence that olive oil is superior in any way for health to saturated fat. And heating these oils absolutely increases their toxicity. However, even unheated, as you might use in a salad, they still pose problems. This graph shows the progressive oxidation of walnut oil over a matter of days, long before it would get to the supermarket, let alone onto your salad.